Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I love it when you say my name. <laughs> okay, so I will be reading out of 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23 from the ESV version. I have titled this, Breaking Out of the Ghetto. And uh, it's important to see where Paul is, uh, set, what Paul is actually saying to Corinthians and uh, through Paul to the Corinthians, what God is saying to us. And so listen in and be addressed by God here. So this is what he's saying. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. As we all know, the theme of this year is proclaiming the love of God. And this month specifically is uh, where we're looking at proclaiming the love of God into our communities. And I want to sort of build upon what Brian spoke last week, how he encouraged us uh, to use the tools that we already have. To We have the convalescent home, we have the Good News Club, we have small groups, as Bernie mentioned. And, and my purpose today specifically is to identify one of the biggest barriers that we have in this church in sharing the gospel and to identify why we need to be evangelistic in nature. So, a barrier for us, I believe, in our church is a temptation to stay in the ghetto. When I first came to the USA, well, I think within the first few weeks, I had a meal with Anthony. And uh, it was uh, at Zen Buffet, I, I recommend that place. <laughs> and uh, it was an opportunity for me to get to know him, him to get to know me, and just sort of to share. And, and he used a term that I don't really use very often, and that, that term was ghetto. And, and, that, and we were specifically referring to how some areas are quite more ghetto than others. So certain places like in El Monte where you used to work in, in Pasadena, some, some, so ghetto, so ghetto it was. <laughs> uh, and then I looked at the, at the dictionary of what the ghetto actually meant, and it meant slum area type of thing. But then I looked at another definition, and I discovered this, so picture this. It is, ghetto is a specific area marked out as distinct, set apart, to contain some group regarded as non-mainstream. So, again, it is a specific area marked out as distinct, set apart to contain some group regarded as non-mainstream. So in many ways, church is a type of a ghetto, according to that definition. We are, we are a group set apart from society. And we are, we are a group doing family together and and like we're linking arms for the glorious uh, glorious gospel for the glory of God and but but the problem is when it becomes the only place when the church becomes the only place it is so easily done but it's actually very unbiblical it is so easy to gain a ghetto mentality to live our lives as if the ghetto the church is all there is we we, we live our lives as if the ghetto of the church is the main thing. We become so passionate about that. But the verse that Burmy mentions all the time, Matthew 28, uh, it goes, it says, what verse was it? 19? I think, yeah. Uh, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So make disciples of all nations. And we know when it says nations, like, that means, okay, overseas, but it also means 
go into your communities, your work, your uh, schooling, sporting activities, whatever it may be. And wherever God has actually assigned you in His sovereignty and begin to brandish the gospel and take it out. And Romans 10, Paul, Paul explains that the gospel, you don't have to go there, oh no, it's all good. Uh, that the gospel can save people. Uh, anyone who calls will be saved, but then says, how can they call if they haven't heard of them? So who is who is going to tell them? Who is going to do this? Paul and Paul examples himself in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, I have become all things to all people, so by all means I can save some. So Paul is not closed off in Ephesians. He's he's uh, he he's saying that church is good. He's but Paul is saying church. Paul is saying church is my life. Church is my family. But, in the context of being gathered as family, we must go into our communities and be the church in our communities. Be all things to all people and by all means we may win some. Life is not just the ghetto and it's really tempting to stay in the ghetto. And the reason why I know is because for so many years I've been in that mentality to stay in the ghetto because I love the ghetto. Like I really love this place and I don't want to break out from it. And that was me living inwardly. Living inwardly. It was everything. So that, it, so that is why we must actually break out of the ghetto. So the next point I want to address is why. Why do we need to be evangelistic? Why do we need to be in the world to win the world? Why do we need to break out of the ghetto? What is the point of all of this? Well, I want you to think of the plight. The plight, the situation of those beyond the ghetto, beyond these walls. So this is something that I and maybe yourselves probably don't think as much because you're sort of thinking, what's God doing in my world? What, what is He doing? Where is He taking me? Where is He leading me? And then in Christian subculture, we sort of look at, okay, let's look at this particular doctrine, and let's look at this particular practice. But in all reality, we, we, we really, the world doesn't really care about those things. And from my personal experience of being here in LA for just less than a year, people are lonely, they're desperate, they're in an absolute wreck. And they're not worried, and they just, they're just going through some hard times, and as soon as you try to engage people, you realize it is just a world of hurt. There are, there are young people so pressurized by school to get a job, uh, to get property, and they, due to this, all of this pressure, they, they turn to drugs, they turn into, they turn, turn to sex, they turn to uh, alcohol, and that's their way of an escape from the pressures of life. And there are, there are probably couples in our city, in LA, where on the outside it looks perfect, like they are the perfect relationship, but then under the surface they're going through some tough things, they're going through some tough major relationship challenge and they have no idea what to do. And there are, there are patients, uh, patients going through terminal illness and they're going through without hope and going through fear and that's just absolutely crazy where they, they're doing it alone and they have a thousand Facebook friends but they have no one with them, no one to get to know them and understand how are they actually feeling. There are single moms struggling financially, crying themselves to sleep, thinking, how am I going to make ends meet? How, how am I going to cope and raise the children that God has given me? There are, there are parents who have invested their whole lives into their children. They have sent them to private schools, they sent them to first class uh, sporting activities, and then they realize as they grow up, their relationship with their child is not what they wanted. It's actually something very different and they sort of looking back at them wondering where do they go wrong? LA is like any other city. It is a, a world of hurt and 
These are the people that the Savior came for. This world, this is what He came for, for those who are hurting and for those who are lost. So what do we do? So we know there's, we have the big challenge of breaking out of the ghetto. Uh, there's, there's, we know there's a need for Jesus in the community. Well, what you do is look at Jesus. Brian said this last week, and I absolutely agree with him. He, you have to look at Jesus' example. Because he was truly in the world to win the world. He, from his birth to his death, it, he was the maker of heaven and earth, coming to earth, rolling up his sleeves up, putting a towel around his waist. And he was spending time with people, being, th being all things to all people, so that by all means, he might save some. He was a friend to sinners. That's what he was and that's what he did. Matthew 9.35 Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So when the Savior came to the earth and looked at people, he didn't see them as he didn't see them as an inconvenience. He he saw them as helpless, harassed, and sheep without a shepherd. So harassed means simply overwhelmed by the, the daily challenges of life. Helpless meaning unable to do anything about it. Uh, sheep without a shepherd, being lost. And you know what? The the term lost can be used sort of lightly. It's being lost doesn't mean it's not a status. It's it's an experience. It's it's a huge experience. And the fruit of that in the Savior's heart is compassion. He fell from fell for them. That's why he he we see our Savior crying over the lost. That's why that's why it was like he cried for people as he considered their lost state, who they are, and how much they are needing be reconciled to God the Father. So to conclude, I want you to fight the temptation and to really break out of the ghetto. Break out of the ghetto. Break, break out of these walls because it's for those who are lost, for those who are no idea what they're doing, they're struggling with life. And how are you supposed to do it? Well, you look to Jesus. You look to Jesus' example by going out, talking to people, seeking to be out winning people, going and making disciples among all nations. And I remember a few months ago, I was mentioned, I think, remember people as souls, not projects. So let's shift the thinking. Let's shift the thinking from thinking less about ourselves, but by thinking and pursuing those who Jesus lived and died for.